Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the significance of Hanukkah. Why is there a Hanukkah and why didn't Moses talk about it? In today's video, I believe we're going to understand why this is a post-exilic feast. Now, we're over here looking at a diagram that I've been working on. Actually, mentally, I've been working on this for a number of years now, but based on a comment I got earlier today, I decided to go ahead and draw this up so I can show you how and why Hanukkah was implemented. What this is, is the 6,000 years of human history, starting all the way back with the birth of Cain in 3906 and working our way all the way around until the year 2024, when we're actually supposed to start to make the transition at least until the kingdom of heaven. We may be a little bit further along than that, but I believe that's when these trumpets and vials and stuff would actually start to be blown and poured out respectively. So as we're looking here at this diagram, which for most of you guys, you're not surprised that it's in the form of a clock. But the unique thing about it is that it has the feast days lined up according to the number. For instance, over here, we see that Passover would be at about the 130 position. Pentecost would be at the 330 position because it falls on the 15th day of the third month. The Feast of Trumpets would be at the seven o'clock position because it's the first day of the seventh month and so on. Well, also notice how it's broken up into three segments or three sections with these colors here. Turns out this section here this first 2000 years is the time up until Abraham there in about 1946 BC. And then the next 2000 years takes us to our Christ there in about 15 AD. And then the next 2000 years takes us to our current period. So when we're looking back through biblical history, we can find examples of when Abraham kept the feast of Passover. That was when Melchizedek actually brought him the bread and the wine there in his celebration. And we also hear about Pentecost during that time when he got the covenant. But we don't hear about most of the other feasts during that 2000 years. Like we don't hear about tabernacles or atonement or much about any of those other holy days until the next 2000 year period when Moses brought these other feast days there in Leviticus 23. Well, that's the case too. It is only after the Messiah came on the scene do we hear about the post exilic feast in this green section. But notice something other really interesting here. When we look at these feast days in their months, Understanding the 6,000 years of human history are the 120 Jubilee cycles. In other words, each one of these blocks represents 490 years. We see an interesting pattern emerge. See how in the seventh cycle is when we get the fall festivals is when we had the Messiah to arrive. Let's look at this a little bit closer. So. This particular month, as I'm going to call it, would have started around 476 BC, which is around the time that they were getting the decrees to rebuild the temple. You see, the temple would have been destroyed in the sixth month. So you had atonement day, which would have been around 280 BC and tabernacles would have started around the time that we read about in the book of Maccabees and would have ended right when the Messiah came on the scene or right when he was born. And that great eighth day would have been the time when he appeared in Jerusalem at about 12 years old or a little bit afterwards. And of course he was the representation of the tabernacling with man. But when you back all the way up to the first month's cycle, that would put us during the time of Enoch. When we add up all of the dates of the progenitors, we see that Enoch was born in the year 3351 BC. And we know he walked the earth for 365 years. That would mean that Enoch was of the first fruits 
fallen in this time about here. We understand that, that that time that he was spending with the Elohim was during the unleavened bread period. So what it appears to me, although we see a few of the festival days implemented in mankind during the first 2000 years, the majority of them came in the second 2000 years, which was followed by the destruction of the temple. Just like back there with Antiochus Epiphanes, the temple had to be rededicated afterwards. Well, once they destroyed Jerusalem altogether, starting in about 66 AD and then bulldozing the temple there in about 685 AD. It was only in around 1000 AD did we start to rededicate the temple, which is around the time that we saw the Jewish community come on the scene. When you look at their history, you see that it was around 1000 AD that the first Jewish people started to appear there in Europe. Now, all of this is related to the Shekinah glory. So what it appears to me is that the Shekinah glory, as it would have came down sometime around this time, sent a wave out around the world where people would have been embracing our father and his laws. The difference with the Jewish community was that they tried to do it in Europe, in Japheth country, in Russia, and that wasn't going to happen, not in Germany, not in those parts of the world, or you're going to keep the feast days. And that's what I believe is the real only difference between the people who experienced the Shekinah glory around the world and those in the Jewish world was that they was actually in the heart of Japheth land where they tried to exterminate them all together. Everybody else around the world in South America or in Africa, even those who would have been over in America would have been able to enjoy our father in peace. But I believe if you try to go over there today and keep the feast days in Russia, they're going to hunt you down like dogs. But anyway, we'll save that for another video. In this one, I just wanted to help you to understand why Hanukkah was not talked about in Moses' time. The first temple had not been dedicated, so there was no need to talk about rededicating the second temple until after it had been destroyed in our Messiah's time. So tell me what you think in the comment section, and I'll see you there. Make sure you subscribed if you haven't done so already, and let's get ready for Hanukkah.